Hey everybody, today I'm going to show you how I troubleshoot PS1s, as well as a few creative ways you can use a paperclip to help you with that process. Here's the system we're going to be looking at today, a faulty PS1 that's been spray painted black by the previous owner. Two issues right off the bat, nothing on the screen and the disk drive doesn't spin. Sometimes I do see a picture, but it's either jumbled up or discolored. And hiding under that paint, you can see the green power LED. This is a really easy system to get into, just six case screws on the back. Cover comes right off, and the power and data cables holding the optical drive in place pull right out as well. Then once you pull the shield out, you can release the motherboard. So let's go through the process of elimination to figure out why your console might not be turning on. The first thing you want to do is make sure your power adapter is good. So check if it's outputting 7.5 volts. If your multimeter lead is too big to fit inside the plug, you can use a paperclip to help you make a connection. And don't worry, I'm not counting this as one of the paperclip hacks that I'm going to show you guys. My power adapter is good, so let's check if it's actually delivering power to the board. So let's ignore for a moment that my particular unit actually turns on and confirm if the input jack is loose or broken. You can get your ground signal from anywhere on the perimeter of the board and check the center of the input jack and one of the nearby components. Both should read 7.5 volts. Okay, so it's not a mechanical issue. Let's check if any of the fuses are blown. Some older style multimeters will have a diode mode like this one right here and others will have a continuity mode like this little guy right here. Either style will work just fine. On this style multimeter, zero means there's a short and one means the circuit's open. Continuity mode is a lot easier because if you hear a beep, that means there's a short and if you don't, that means the circuit's open. The first fuse you wanna check is labeled PS600 right underneath the input jack. I'm actually checking the wrong component here. You wanna check that component to the right. There's also four fuses on the left side of the board Check those one by one. And I've put the labels up on the screen if you find those helpful. And for demonstration, if you have an older style multimeter, you wanna look for a reading that's close to zero. If everything looks good up to here, you wanna check the power button next. Although the power button has four pins, it's actually two separate switches in one. So grab that paper clip and cut two pieces about half an inch long. What you wanna do is short the rails horizontally to mimic the power button being pressed. A little bit of masking tape should be plenty enough to hold it in place long enough for you to do your testing. So plug your power adapter in, and if your console turns on, that means your power button's faulty. These power buttons are flimsy, so I don't want to open mine up in this demonstration, given there's nothing wrong with it. But if you do want to try rebuilding yours, I do cover that repair in an earlier PlayStation video I posted, linked in the description. Alright, time to move on to the fun stuff, the video issues. So if you're getting no video or shaky video like this with messed up colors, black and white colors, the culprit is most likely the AC coupling circuit. That's a series of components that filter the video signal between the RGB encoder and the AV multi-out. And that capacitor I marked in red is the component that always fails. Using a paper clip taped to a standard RCA cable, you can create your own video probe to tap into the video signal before it goes through the faulty capacitor. Cut a piece off your paper clip about an inch long and tape it directly to your RCA connector. Once you hook everything up, you're going to be probing the left side of that capacitor. I'm using my capture card here, but you would just hook your board up to your TV like you normally would. There's the intro chime, and this time we're getting some shaky video. While everything is turned on and plugged in, unplug the yellow composite cable 
from your TV and plug the other end of your probe in its place. Using the paperclip end, tap the left side of the AC coupling capacitor. You should see a perfect image, solid, with the right colors. Here it is a second time. And this leaves no doubt that this capacitor is faulty. Even though this is a surface mount capacitor, it's large enough that you can comfortably remove it with a regular soldering iron. I like to add some flux just to make the process easier. Get your tip nice and wet and drop it right in the top over there. Then just repeat the process, but this time get it up the other end. Then it's just a matter of melting one side, lifting up a little bit, waiting for the solder to solidify. And then just repeat and do the same thing on the other side. You don't want to force it and rip the pads off, so just keep alternating sides until the component releases. Just like butter. Perfect. Then come in with some soldering wick to clean those pads off. Finally, a few drops of IPA and we're ready to install the new capacitor. Now, I know some of you might have an aneurysm, but I'm going to swap an SMD capacitor with a radial capacitor. In an ideal world, you would swap it with the exact same component. But sometimes it's not economical to order such a small quantity of components when you try and get these things online. For whatever reason, the electronics store in my neighborhood doesn't carry any SMD components. For those of you that saw my last PS1 video, you know that this capacitor is going to fit just fine if we lay it on its side. After a little trimming and bending those legs into shape, this guy is ready to go. And make sure you pay attention to the polarity. In this shot, the bottom pad is negative. The usual flux, wet the iron, pre-tin the pad, pre-tin the component leg, and then solder everything in place. Then just repeat for the other side. Once it's anchored in, you can come back with some flux and make everything look pretty, and I choose to do that here on both sides. Here's the side profile, and you can see we're not going to have any issues with clearance. Alright, let's test it out. Looks perfect. Colors look good. Image is stable. This board's good to go. I have yet to revive a faulty optical drive on any console I've worked on, on or off camera. And unfortunately, this drive is no exception. And as soon as I opened it up, I realized the gears were broken, as you're about to see. If your system's not reading discs, it could be the gears, it could be the spindle, it could be the laser. Chances are, you're going to have to source a working drive from a donor unit. I already have a restored PS1 in my collection. This video is meant to be more of a demonstration. This system is going back in my parts bin, and at the rate I keep collecting these faulty consoles, I'm sure it's just a matter of time before I get my hands on another PS1. Guys, I hope you enjoyed this video and found it helpful. As I experiment with different styles of documenting my repair work, I want to make sure the content I'm pushing out is resonating with you guys. So let me know what you think. I welcome all your feedback, good and bad. Take care guys. See you in the next video.